Srila Prabhupada's great mercy, we have all come to Sri Radha Gokulananda Mandir. I would first like to introduce a very dear, his name is Nitai Prabhu. Nitai Prabhu has been the head pujari for these deities for many years. The exemplary devotion which he offers to these deities is a great source of inspiration to devotees all over the world, especially to my heart. Let us offer our deepest and most enthusiastic gratitude to Nita. Nithai Prabhu is always trying to put everyone's attention on the beautiful forms of Sri Sri Radha Gokudananda and wants to keep himself always the servant of the servant of their servant. Thank you very much. These deities are very special. To speak the glories of the histories of these deities is a very deep subject matter, of which I will very briefly touch one part of a drop in the ocean of their glories. To your far left is the very personal deity that Sri Narottam Das Thakur worshipped of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <coughs> this deity was later brought into Vrindavan and is still worshipped here today. This is the original deity of Lord Chaitanya, personally worshipped by Srila Narottam Das Thakur. The next deity, second to your left, is Sri Sri Radha Vinaya. Lokanath Maharaj was born of Padmanath Chakravarti and Sita in the eastern part of Bengal. He was from his childhood a very dear friend of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. His father was the disciple of Sri Adwaita Chari. He went to participate in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes in Navadvi. When Lord Chaitanya decided to take sannyas, he understood it would be unbearable to many of his devotees, to all of his devotees, but especially to Srila Lokanath Goswami. So Lord Chaitanya told Lokanath Goswami that soon I will cut my hair and accept the renounced order of life. You should not be here to see this pastime. I would like you to go to Vrindavan. Lokanath Goswami, his heart was broken at the thought of leaving the association of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu placed his feet on Lokanath's head, embraced him, and told him that he would soon be coming to Vrindavan to meet him. Ugarva Goswami, who was the dear, intimate friend of Lokanath Goswami, was also sent with him. The two of them came to Vrindavan. In the ocean of grief, knowing that Lord Chaitanya would be taking sannyas, but still they were feeling the great ecstasy in the heart of carrying out Lord Chaitanya's instruction. They waited some time in Vrindavan, but then they heard that Lord Chaitanya did take sannyas in Kapra. But by the request of his mother and the Vaishnavas, he went to Jagannath Puri and then began a tour of all of South India. To Lokanath Goswami, what is Vrindavan without Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So he and Bhugarva Goswami walked all the way down from South India to meet Lord Chaitanya. When they came down, they found out Lord Chaitanya had already been several, two years through South India, and he had returned to Jagannath Puri. So they started walking all the way from the southern provinces of India to Puri. When they got near Puri, they found out Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had left Puri to go to Vrindavan. They, they hurried all the way to Vrindavan. When they reached Vrindavan, they found the news 
Chaitanya Mahaprabhu traveled through the twelve forests of Vrindavan for a month. For a month he lived in Mathura and then at Akuragat. He would roam through the various holy places of Braj and he left after two months and now he is at Prayag for the Mahagamela. Lokanath Goswami decided tomorrow morning I will leave for Prayag. But that night he had a dream where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared to him and told him that I want you to stay in Vrindavan. So Lokanath Maharaj traveled to the twelve forests of Vrindavan in great ecstatic love and he came to a place called Kishori Kund which is in a village called Umrao near the town of Chatravan. There he was living in seclusion constantly meditating on the divine pastimes of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna and the mercy of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In his heart awakened a desire to worship the deity form of the Lord. The Lord knows the heart of his pure devotees. The Lord appeared in the form of a Brahman and presented to Lokanath Goswami the beautiful deities of Sri Radha as we know it. Then that Brahman disappeared. Lokanath Maharaj seeing these deities, he was struck with wonder. Who are they? Who has brought them? How have they come? In his bewilderment, the deity spoke, said, My name is Radha Vinod, <laughs> and I have by my own sweet will personally come to deliver myself to you. Now, give up your bewilderment and cook me some bhoga because I am hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so Lokanath Maharaj picked the roots from the forest and begged for whatever he could get and made nice bhoga, offered it to Radha Vinod. After offering, and he made little archi for Radha Vinod with whatever he had. He made a bed out of fresh flowers from the Vrindavan forest laid the deity in the bed, personally massaged the deity's feet, massaged his legs, sang beautiful bhajans for him, made little fans out of leaves and fanned the deities. He understood that he was just living under a different tree every night, so he wanted to make a temple for the deity. How did he make a temple? He begged for a piece of cloth and he personally sewed a little bag out of that cloth and kept Radhavinod in that bag mm -hmm. that he hung from his neck. And wherever he went he would take Sri Radhavinod, worship with such intimate devotional affection. The people of Umrao and Chatravan, seeing this great, great, great Vaishnava at Kishwari Kund, they came many times volunteering to make a kutir or a temple. But Lokanath Maharaj said, No, no, I am very satisfied with the way I am living now. So for many years he lived at Kishori Kund, which is not far from Nandagram and Barsana, near Kadiravan. Some years later, Rupa and Sanatan Goswami came to Vrindavan and they called Lokanath Goswami to come to Vrindavan to be within their association. So then Lokanath Goswami came and lived in this beautiful little garden that we are sitting now. And here he worshipped Radha Vinod and performed his bhajan. He was always immersed in the ecstasy of the highest realms of love and separation from Lord Chaitanya. When he heard the news Lord Chaitanya disappeared from the world, his heart was stricken with grief. And then years later, when Rupa and Sanatana left this world, he was wondering why this fire of separation does not consume my life. Why am I so sinful that I still live even in the separation of my Lord? He lived in this way of pure love. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally 
appeared to Sri Narottam Das Thakur and sent him to Vrindavan. When Vrindavan, when Narottam Das Thakur met with Sri Lokanath Goswami, he decided, this is my home. He requested Lokanath Maharaj for initiation. But Lokanath Goswami said, I am too sinful. I am too fallen. I cannot take any disciple. I have resolved in my mind to never take a disciple. So Narottam Das Thakur served his Guru Maharaj with great devotion and attention, not expecting anything in return. He would perform the most menial services for his Guru Maharaj. One such service is each morning Lokanath Maharaj would go to perform his morning duties and respond to nature and then bathe in Jamuna. In the night, when no one was around, Narottam with his own hands would clean the stools and urine of Lokanath Maharaj and make it very, very nice and put fresh water there. Lokanath Goswami was wondering, who is doing this? One day he secretly hid to watch in the night, saw Narottam Das very faithfully cleaning that dirty place. He came out of the hiding place, said, Narottam, why? You are a prince, the son of a king. You are a great scholar and a great, great Vaishnava. Why? Why are you lowering yourself? To such a dirty surface as this. He was weeping and crying to see the humility of the service attitude of Lokanath Goswami, I mean Narottam Das Thakur. Narottam Das Thakur, with such a humble and sincere heart, he said, I have given up all the riches and treasures of this world, and I have achieved the supreme treasure of my heart, the menial service of your lotus feet. Soon after that, Lokanath Goswami initiated Sri Narottam Das The place that all these pastimes were enacted were right here. Where the Samadhi Mandir of Lokanath Goswami was, is that we were just at. That's where he performed his bhajan. That's where he <coughs> trained up and taught Narottam Das Thakur. That's where these beautiful pastimes were enacted. And after he left his body, he was put in Samadhi at that very place. The next deities are Sri Radha Vijay Govinda. They are the deities of Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushan. We know that when the Gaudiya Vaishnav Sampradaya was being attacked in Sri Jaipur Dham, an opposing Sampradaya was saying that we were not a bona fide because we did not have a proper commentary of the Vedanta Sutra. But Jiva Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they never bothered with a direct commentary of Vedanta Sutra because it is explained that Vedavyas himself commented on Vedanta Sutra in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. So therefore all of their commentaries were based on the Bhagavatam. But other sampradayas, they were not properly understanding us. So they wanted to take away the rights of the Gaudiya Sampradaya to worship Govindaji Mandir in Jaipur. So the devotees came to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and they prayed to him, please help us. He was old at the time, so he sent Baladeva Vidyabhushan to Jaipur. And in a place near Jaipur called Lantan, the <clears throat> Baladeva Yabhushan presented his commentary of Vedanta Sutra. How was that written? He sat before Govinda and prayed to him, please empower me to defend the principles of the six Goswamis of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was Govinda Dev himself who personally spoke within the heart of Baladeva Yabhushan the Govinda Bhasi commentary of the world. And when all these Vaishnavas heard this, they realized 
that this is the greatest commentary ever made on the Vedanta Sutra. So from that time on, the deity of Govinda was named Vijaya Govinda, Govinda who gave victory to the Gaudiya Sampradaya. The deity, this very small deity, is the original deity of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, whose name is Radha Gokulananda. He chose to live here in the place established by Sri Lokanath Goswami. He was doing his bhajan here in Vrindavan, as well as at Radha Kund. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com.